So um, today we'll speak about uh, how to plot engineering and experimental data. A uh, little summary, so I'll briefly present Genius Graphics. Um, we'll see then how, um, what are the strategies to load an ASCII file. Uh, ASCII is a very um, common format, as it has the huge advantage of being uh, human readable. Uh, we'll speak then about uh, the advantages of the TechPlot data format that allows you basically to store uh, more information or more advanced structures for your data. Uh, we'll then present two examples. Uh, first one is a 2D plot from an Excel data, and uh, we'll see how uh, you can perform advanced 2D plotting by um, overlaying frames. Uh, the second example is uh, how to create an advanced 2D plot. Um, and we'll have an example uh, with a Douglas plot, which is made of uh, numerous zones. So Genius Graphics, we are providing solutions to visualize and analyze scientific data. We are a tech plot distributor in Europe, and there is approximately 1,300 organizations that are using tech plot in Europe. Uh, we have more than 20 years of experience, and we are based in Southeast Germany, in Regensburg. And we are doing training, consulting, as well as uh, software development. Our biggest customers are from the aerospace domain, such as Airbus Group, the Aviation, or the DLR. So um, today's example, uh, we'll focus on ASCII tables, and uh, they are used in various experiments, from uh, basic sensor data to advanced uh, measurement techniques, such as PIV, PSP. Uh, we are wishing to do a uh, webinar about advanced measurement technique, um, for example, TSP, PSP. Uh, if you have some data to, and you wish to present that data, uh, you are more than welcome to contact us and uh, we'll be glad to have a common webinar. Um, we'll then see two examples. So the first one is an oblique shock diagram from the Excel table. So this is this one. It is made of one zone with two frames that are overlaying each other. So this is a powerful way to create um, advanced plots. And the second one is that Douglas plot here on the right. Uh, this is just one frame, but you have numerous zones. So how to visualize ASCII files from very simple data? Uh, you have three data loaders, the text spreadsheet loader, general text loader, and TechPad data loader. And uh, they have different features that uh, you should use depending on uh, the data structure you have. I present today uh, within TechPlot Focus, which is a product that is aiming to visualize and post-process uh, experimental data. But uh, if you are using TechPlot 360EX, um, just know that every feature of Focus is present in EX. So you would be able to redo uh, the exact same manipulation within EX um, the exact same way. Um, we have a new version of TechPlot Focus, which is 2016 um, R1. It has a lot of new features, such as a new um, interface, for example, which is Qt based and allows uh, context sensitive menus, for example. Uh, there is also a limitation of 5 million points per frame. And if you are using Focus currently and you feel um, impacted by that limitation, please contact us. So um, I will start with a very simple data um, that is here. So it's an ASCII file. Um, as you can see on the first line, I have uh, simply the names of my variables, and then I have a list, so those are points, basically. So it's a point-based data, and I have my list of points, so it's a cube of uh, 10 by 20 by 30, so I have 6,000 points. So I load that file with interpret course, uh, focus, sorry. So here is focus uh, 2016 R1. I'll start with a new layout, and here I will just select my uh, text spreadsheet loader. I'll uh, take my file here, and I'll uh, use that little arrow here that allows you to um, access advanced options for the data loader. And as you can see, the text spreadsheet loader by default, by default, sorry, is um, handling uh, CSV data, so comma-separated values. And here in my example, um, so let me fade it back. Uh, my values are separated by a space, so I will just specify that within my data loader. You can also plot, um, well, you can skip I indexes. So if you want, for example, to plot every other point, you would um, have an I skip of two, for example. So here I'll plot every point. Here it is. So my data is loaded. Um, I've switched to 3D. This is a cube. 
And as you can see, I currently do not have um, a mesh that allows me to visualize surfaces or explore a volume. So if I turn on my mesh, um, as you can see, the values or the points are linked uh, in the order they appear within my data file. Um, if you want to visualize your pressure, you can, uh, so this is my field variable, basically. You can color your mesh by that pressure, but you can also, for example, show a scatter and, uh, well, let's use spheres there and color those spheres by pressure as well. So, um, this is a text spreadsheet loader. And as you can see, there's a limitation if you wish to explore your volume. So basically what is happening between your points here. So, um, we'll then see more advanced loaders. And uh, within the plot focus, you can work with many frames. So I will here click that little button and draw a new frame. So here is my second frame. And you can tile your frame and link them. So we'll just tile my two frames here, one over the other. And uh, here I will use the general text loader. So I have a second data that is very similar. It's basically exactly the same data. But here I just added a little title. Um, so then I have 6,002 lines, one line for my title and one line for my variables. So um, we'll just click open here, select the general text loader. And here, as you can see, general text loader handles by default uh, .txt files. However, uh, as soon as you have ASCII tables, you can just load any um, extension. So you can use that wild out character, which is a star here to basically display all of your files. And here I will just use my general text loader example here, and I click open. So um, the general text loader allows you to define manually, for example, your title. So you can look for your title of my first line. Um, here the variables are defined on the second line. So I will just enter second line. And the data itself is defined from the line three until the end of the file. Uh, that loader allows you to basically define uh, or to load data that is stored either on a point format or uh, with self-centered values, so block format. And you can specify the dimensions of your data. We will see that later. Uh, here I will just keep that auto-calculate IMAX by default, means TechPot will just link my points in the order they appear in my file, so it will be exactly the same then uh, with the text spreadsheet over here. Uh, you can view your data once it's processed. So you've got options to define what you want to view. And here, as you can see, uh, TechPlot recognizes my four variables, and here are the values under. Uh, you can save and load those um, settings, so you don't have to um, to redo it every time you want to load a data file. So you just click OK. And once again, I mean XY, so we'll switch to 3D. And uh, once again, as you can see, I do not have a mesh that is structured that allows me to explore a volume of surfaces. So here I will just turn on my mesh and I will color it uh, by pressure. In, um, in Focus 2016 R1, you are able to right click zones and you can interactively, for example, define a contour, but also vectors and so on. Um, so here I cannot display a contour that I don't have a, um, a mesh that allows that, but I can color my mesh here by pressure. So this is the exact same uh, thing. You can tile your frames, but you can also link them. And here I will link them in 3D plot view, so I'm actually seeing the same thing in both cases. So what is the difference between the uh, text spreadsheet loader and the uh, general text loader? Is that basically here, as you can see, I have the title of my data set, and it's been automatically recognized. Here I just have a uh, default title that is converted data set. So now I will reuse my um, general text loader. So I will create once again a new frame. And in that new frame, I will load the same data. So let me just, oops, sorry, use that Excel data loader. So here is my general text loader. And uh, here I will just specify the exact same data, but this time in the data tab. So basically every settings, if you are still in your session are saved. So I still have my variable and lay two, for example. And uh, here in my data, I will specify the dimensions manually. So here I have a cube that is 10 by 20 by 30. And by clicking okay, 
so I can once again check that my file has been uh, processed in the right way. And by clicking OK, I will load my data here. So this time you can see there is edges here. And uh, that's actually because I have a structure mesh on my cube. So we'll turn off translucency. As you can see now, my points are linked and they are defining a mesh that allows me to explore my volume uh, to plot a contour, for example, on my cube. So um, you can now perform, for example, slices or display ISO surfaces. Uh, this is quite easy uh, once you have a mesh. So we just turn on a contour here. And this is it. So um, I will, once again, synchronize them in my 3D view. And uh, that general text loader allows you basically to define surfaces that may be interesting if you are interested in um, in exploring your volume. Um, now I will speak about the TechPlot data loader. So TechPlot data format basically allows you to store um, more advanced things. Uh, so for example, you can have multiple zones, you can have transient data, uh, you can store auxiliary data that is a set of um, either values or string characters that you wish to store. So it can be a notation and the, um, and the experiment you run. Uh, you can store unstructured grid. You can have self-centered values and you can use passive variable and variable sharing uh, that basically allows you to save space on your disk and also to gain time in terms of uh, visualization. So we'll see that right now. Um, back to my ASCII tables. So that was my general text loader that I just loaded. And here I have a TechPlot ASCII data format. Um, as you can see, it's quite simple. And most of the comments here are, um, well, some are optional. Here for the title, I just uh, had uh, that little keyword that is title equals. Same for the variables. And then here I store the auxiliary data to my data set. Um, the variable name is auxiliary note, and this is its value. So this is a simple um, annotation. Then I define a zone, so um, you can enter the name of your zone, and you can specify strand ID and solution time. That allows you to work with transient data. So every data that has a strand ID of zero is basically non-transient, and then you can assign a strand ID to a set of zones, and all of those zones will belong to the same object, so they will con be considered sorry, as the same object within TechPlot. And that object can exist in many solution times, so you can specify that here. Um, here I have the structure of my data, so IJK indexes, and uh, this is an order zone. I have a data packing that is point, but you can also have cell-centered values, and the data type here is uh, double precision. So I load uh, the data within TechPlot. I will just create a new frame once again, I type them. And here I will just use my TechPlot data loader so um, here is my TechPlot ASCII data format uh, example. Here it is. So as you can see, it's exactly the same than in the general text loader, but you don't have to define manually uh, where is your data and how it is organized. So here I also um, display contour, no translucency. And uh, you can refer to your auxiliary data by uh, creating a little text. So for example, um, here I have a variable that is called aux data set double point and then you can uh, just enter the name of your variable so here in my um, in my file it was called auxiliary note and I will just copy and paste that here so as you can see um, knows the value of the auxiliary data is uh, is set so you can drag and drop everything in TechBot if you want to have another layout and I will just uh, synchronize them. So here are basically the different ways of loading ASCII files from something very basic, that is a scatter of point. You can have um, advanced reconstruction of a volume and uh, store, for example, auxiliary data. The auxiliary data is uh, available in the data data set info. So um, here, as you can see, my zone is order of 10 by 20 by 30 in that frame as well. And in the other, it's just 6,000 points that are one after the other. Here in auxiliary data, so you can store auxiliary data to zones, to data sets, frame, variable, line map, and so on. So here, if I go to data set, I have my uh, data that is here and it's value that is available as well. Okay. Um, 
So in TechPlot Focus, you can mock with many pages. Um, so here I will just rename my page um, as the data loaders, for example. It's an A, it's better. And you can uh, work with many pages. So each page can have numerous data set, numerous frames. And uh, here I will just um, load a trend 10 case. So So I will just uh, write it this way, for example. So uh, my transient case uses um, advanced features of TechPlot data format. So as you can see, it's more or less the same. So I just changed the um, title and the auxiliary node here. And there is another thing that I changed is here the strand ID. So um, it was zero in the previous data set. And now it's one. So it means that this zone corresponds to my object number one at solution time zero. So this is a transient zone. Additionally, I created another cube. Um, so I will just go to 6,000 and few lines here. So here I defined an, a second zone, basically, that is also corresponding to my object number one, but this time these zones exist in my first time step. Here I have the same uh, data, but as you can see, um, this is basically the same cube that has been translated by uh, on the Y axis. And you can save a lot of uh, space on your disk by sharing variable. So here, for example, I share variable one, which is X, three, which is Z, and four, which is the pressure. And those three variables will be equals to the one that are defined in the zone one. So basically, if you have a transient case with, for example, always the same mesh, you can just share one, two, three here. That would be your um, your mesh variable, and just write your field variables here. Um, so I will just load that in TechPlot. So once again, using TechPlot data loader, here I'll take my ASCII format transient data, and here it is. So um, this is the exact same cube, but here, as you can see, uh, I have my cube, which is a transient case. So I have my solution time and my time slider here that are activated, so I can go to my first time step if I want. So, just... so here I can explore my data in a, in a transient way. Uh, auxiliary data is still available. And if I go to my zone style here, uh, I have a little star that uh, that is behind my, uh, my zone number. And that means that this uh, zone belongs to, a, to an object that can be transient or at least it has a strand ID that is not zero. So here, if I go on the second uh, time step, uh, my zone number gets updated. It's zone number two now, <coughs> and it's still uh, corresponding to a given object. OK, so um, this is it for a very basic uh, way of visualizing ASCII data. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we'll see now how to plot Excel table uh, with a very simple example. So this is an oblique shock um, case. So basically, you have um, an upcoming flow at Mach 1, which is supersonic. And the flow gets deviated by an angle of theta. Uh, then you have a shock that forms at an angle of theta. And you have a second Mach uh, after the shock, that is Mach 2. And uh, for each theta, you can have two possibilities of beta. In one, uh, M2 is still supersonic, and that's called a weak shock. And uh, if beta is bigger, uh, M2 will be subsonic, and that's called a strong shock. So we have an Excel table here that lists uh, over four variables, so M1, theta, beta, M2. And uh, we will perform from that very simple table uh, the plot that is here. So that allows you, for example, for one deviation of theta of 20 degrees, um, if you have an incident mech of 2.2, .2, for example, or 2, uh, you can have either a weak shock with, say, uh, mech 2 at 1.2, and the beta at approximately 55, or you can have a strong shock. So here is my two lane, and you would have a M2 at uh, 0 0.7, and uh, an angle for the shock at 75 degrees. So um, here is the data in Excel. So it's, uh, as I just said, M1, theta, beta, and M2. So it's really um, an easy way, let's say, to store your data. And here at the end of my um, file, I uh, manually created some uh, some data points that are not relevant. Uh, it is just to show you that in TechPlot you can decide not to take into account some uh, some data points. 
Uh, for example, if you run an experiment and a sensor is not giving you the right value because it may be broken or it may be uh, not uh, not set up correctly at the beginning of your experiment, you can decide not to take those points into account. So um, I'll add a new page, and here I will call it um, a shop table. Very simple. And this is an Excel data, so here I will just use my Excel data loader. And I will go to the right um, to the right directory. And by clicking open, um, I'll be able to define the way I want to load my data from Excel. So here I will use a table um, storage. So basically, each uh, on the first row, you have the variable names, and then you have their values. But you can have a carpet uh, storage. So basically, on the first row, you would have your X values. On the first column, you would have your Y values. And in between, you would have your field values. And you can also define uh, yourself, your zones, variables, and data locations, and so on. Um, this is a very simple example, and TechPad recognizes it uh, automatically. So um, I know that on my first sheet from the range A1 to D 1714, I have four variables that are M1, theta, beta, and M2. And this is what I want. So I just click Finish. And here is loaded. I'll go from uh, XY line plot to a 2D Cartesian plot. And I will, first of all, assign my axis. So in that plot, assign XY, you can define which variable you want. And I will use theta versus beta. Here it is. So um, as in the first example here, for example, uh, there is no mesh that is allowing me to basically plot a um, a surface. So if I display the mesh, as you can see, I will display also the scatter of points. Here I have a number of points, and all of those points are linked in the way they appear in my Excel table. Um, this do not allow me, for example, to display a contour. However, there is a very uh, convenient feature in TechPlot Focus and TechPlot 360, actually. Uh, you can find it in data 2D triangulation, and that basically allows you to select a zone and to triangulate those points to be able to plot something um, as it will create you a surface. So I'll just click triangulate here, and here it's been done. So as you can see, I have an edge, and I can now display a mesh. So here I have my two meshes. It creates a new zone. So I will not work with my original zone, but just with the triangulated one. And here is my um, my mesh. So I'm now able to display a contour, for example, Mac1. And um, here, um, here the points on the outer edge are the points I uh, manually entered here. So I have a Mac1, Mac2 of 15. Uh, this is wrong. I don't want to show that. There is other points that I would like not to show. Those are the points uh, for which theta is uh, less than zero. So if I go back to my um, physics here, if theta is less than zero, we don't have a shock anymore. It's a detent, and um, the relation is then not valid. So I wish basically not to show that left part and those uh, outer part here. <coughs> um, you can blank values in that plot, blanking value blanking too, and that allows you to define constraints and um, and plot them. So I will. Um, I will put a constraint of M1. As you can see here, it's valid for approximately M1 equals five, let's say six. So um, I will blank when M1 is greater than six, five, six, okay. Um, for the second one, I will blank it when theta is less than or equal to zero, so that's the left part here. If I click on include value blanking, as you can see, uh, this data set has been blanked and I will trim myself along a um, constant boundary. Okay. <coughs> so now we are able to work with that data and uh, we will basically define um, the plot the exact way we want. So first of all, I will define my contour levels. So I will just uh, remove my levels here and I will set them with say min, max and delta. So I'll start at Mach 1 equals 1, and uh, I'll end up with 6, and I'll have a delta of 0 0.5, for example. Here it is. So here I have um, my data. And um, actually, I can add few levels manually. Uh, for example, 1.25. Uh, 
uh, when the seventy five, and uh, and that's it. Will be good enough. <coughs> Uh, second contour I wish to plot is uh, my M2, and here I just want to show um, whether M2 is supersonic or subsonic, so we just have a M2 contour of 1. Um, now in the zone style, I'm able to, uh, by selecting my triangulation zone here, I'm able in the contour plot to uh, display lines and flood, and here I will just uh, flood by M2, so I know whether M2 is supersonic uh, in red here or subsonic in blue here. And uh, I will keep my lines by M1, but I will color them by M1. Um, in the control dialog, you can play a bit with the coloring. So here it's a bit aggressive. Um, I will find something that uh, is uh, less acceptable. So in, in that level and colors here, you can uh, scroll and you can go through different options. So I don't know, finding something a bit uh, nicer to look at. Uh, that one, for example. Same for M1 here, I will just um, go through the different options I have. And uh, let's say I'm interested in having something like this. Here it is. OK. Um, so now I have M1 contours and M2, oh, sorry, M2 contours and M1 lines. Uh, I can also access my control details by double clicking things. And here I will just show labels and my M1. Um, Lines, so I know exactly what line is what value. <coughs> so now we wish to have, for example, at that M2 equals one here, a ISO line, and to show it uh, in big. So you have two options: either you duplicate that zone and you create a new contour line, or you can just copy and paste your frame. So as you can see here, you work with many frames. Uh, you have the list of your frames in the frame sidebar. And from the shock table here, I copy it and paste it. So I know I have two frames that are overlaying each other. Um, quick word, if you copy a frame, you can just paste it in any um, Microsoft Office application, such as Word or PowerPoint. So if you don't need a big um, resolution for your data, that's a very convenient way to insert images in your uh, report or presentations. <coughs> so, <coughs> Sorry. Here, what I will do, I will just plot that M2 line uh, for M2 equals 1. So I will just go to my triangulation, select lines only, and just, sorry, just color my line by M2. So here is a, I have my M2 line that is colored by M1, and I'll put it quite thick or even thicker. So that allows me to, um, to have that value here. Um, now what I would like to do is to basically have those two plots together and that goes through frame linking. So the first thing is that I will double click the frame here and I will not show uh, the background, for example. It allows me to have something. So here I have a shading as well. I will withdraw it. So now I will, so I will also delete my um, contour variables or contour legend. And now I wish basically to overlay those two frames to have something like this. Uh, however, it needs to be accurate, and that goes through uh, frame linking. So in my frame linking, I will just uh, put those frames in my group two. So both of them, actually. Um, I do that because of frame linking is basically um, getting, uh, well, it's consistent over your many pages. So if I tile my frames here in that page, I would tile them in that page as well, and I don't want to do that. Um, I will link them in frame size and position, so they are exactly overlaying each other. And now I will just do that in the axis ranges and position. So now I have the exact same uh, position for my axis. And here is basically the kind of uh, plot you would like to achieve uh, within your uh, Excel by overlaying frames. Um, so now we'll see how to plot um, a 2D plot, but this time with one frame and many zones. So here we are plotting six variables. So as you can see, you can put quite a big number of information within one frame and we'll work with uh, contour lines, different zones, meshings, and so on. So um, I will just load that data. So you'll add a page here that is doghouse. Here it is. And I load my data. So this is a uh, tech plot data. Um, it's ASCII, 
So I'll just click it here. Uh, as you can see, when you load an ASCII table, um, TechPot is internally converting that ASCII file to a binary. And here it is. So um, we will recreate that um, plot here. So as you can see, I have Mac versus turn rate. So once again, I go to plot assign x y, and I'll just select turn rate as my y axis. Here it is. And uh, as you can see, my Mac is ranging from zero to um, to one to two approximately, and my turn rate is ranging from zero to thirty. So um, in my axis details, I can access it by plot axis or by double clicking uh, the axis. Here in the range, you can basically decide to tell TechPad that your axes are independent. So you can have something that is scaled. So here it is. So as you can see, my Mac is now ranging from 0 to 1.2 and my turn rate from 0 to 32. So um, let's get interested in the data here. So as you can see, we have numerous zones and each of those zones stores a given data and they store it in different ways. So um, First of all, I will just uh, decide not to activate my contour mesh edges and uh, scatter for all of those um, for all of those zones. So I start from something that is really blank, and we can see what um, what is currently being done. So in the plot here, as you can see, we have a black background. So once again, in the axis details, you have that area here. You can fill it with a black. Um, it's a black feeling, simply. And uh, here I obviously have a shading. Sorry. Yeah. So I need to turn off my shading as well. Here it is. So um, now from my zone style, I will just um, display zones as a pop-up. So as you can see here, we have ISO lines of uh, G load, and uh, those are stored as, as a mesh. Sorry. And same here, we have ISO line of um, altitude, so ISO altitude line, and we will store them um, once again as mesh. So we'll just show that, yes. And uh, currently it's black, but I will put that in uh, in blue. So here is basically my ISO G lines and my ISO altitude. Um, I will use a dashed uh, mesh here. And here I will just uh, put legends on my um, on my ISO lines. So um, if you don't know which one is which, you can just activate and uh, deactivate one. So here is my 2D line. So as you can see that the one that is here in the bottom. So I will just add some labels here. Label. So here is 2G. Oops, sorry. And I will use the same coloring, which is cyan. I put it a bit smaller. Here it is. So um, now I have a label here, but as you can see, it's not linked to the grid, but it's linked to the frame position. So if you want to link it to the grid, you can just um, position it by grid here. And now if I translate or zoom in, as you can see, the, um, the label position remains consistent. You can copy and paste labels. So it would be my 4G. This is my 6G. Sorry. 7G and 8G. Um, if you wish to put um, a label here on the line, for example, you will need to rotate it, for example. Um, here I will just copy and paste my 2G. And here in my ISO surface 304 meters is that one at the top here. So as you can see, if I deactivate and reactivate it, uh, it gets updated. And here is 304 meters. Um, I will choose an angle for, for example, 60 degrees. And here I have a uh, text box that I wish to get it filled. So basically, if I uh, position that here, as you can see, the um, the mesh drawing is still there. So I will just simply uh, use a text box and fill it in black. So that allows me not to draw the um, the lines uh, at the same position as the label. So I just once again copy and paste that 
here I have uh, 6,457, sorry. Tuck. Once again, here we'll just go a bit smaller angle. Uh, this is 609. This is 914. Of course, everything uh, that I'm doing right now is a bit, uh, it takes time, but you can record that into a macro, for example. So this is 1219. And, uh, and, so, and so you basically get the, the idea. Okay. Um, now we have other kind of uh, data. So uh, here's a flight envelope. I will just show its mesh and uh, show it in white. And here is, uh, well, I take a bigger light thickness. This is quite important because uh, um, basically the flight envelope tells you where you can fly and where um, your plane will not fly, basically. So um, here that limit is due to stalling, for example. Um, this one is uh, an incident, so this is stalling due to a low speed. This is stalling due to a high incident. This is a structural load, so as you can see, it's parallel to the G load, and uh, here as well. And uh, here is a high speed uh, stall. So um, basically, you can know in a um, in a very quick look uh, whether your plane will fly at that given Mach and turn rate on it. Um, now we'll add something, which is uh, basically uh, the ISO energy lines. So I will just show the mesh so you can see it. I put it in red. So this time I have a red mesh here, and um, this is a mesh, so we want to plot ISO lines a bit like we did in the um, in the Excel table. So I will just not show that, but I will show its contour. And uh, so just let me show the contour here. And here it's controlled by TAS, but I will uh, choose my energy lines, so ISO energy lines that are stored on my variable 82. So here it is, and um, I had different levels here. I will set the same, so I had 15, 10, 0, minus 5, and so on. So minus 10 to 15 by a delta of 5. So minus 5 to 15, delta of 5, perfect. So I'll just click OK, and here I have the same um, control levels than in the other one. <coughs> I also have here a blanking value. So as you can see uh, here, I have data outside of my um, <coughs> of my uh, flight envelope, and uh, this is not interesting. So I will just blank that data. So as you can see, if I color it by blanking value here, um, I have a blanking of one outside and uh, zero in it. So we'll blank every um, every value with a blanking value of one. So once again, plot blanking value blanking blank when so I should select my blank variable and uh, is uh, greater than or, well, is greater than zero, for example. Okay, so here is my blanking value and that is it. Um, no, I will not display a contour, but just uh, the ISO lines. So here I will just not choose fluid, but uh, lines. And I'll put red lines. I'll have them, so you have preset um, line thickness, but you can enter it manually. So here I'll just put 0 0.2, and this is it. Um, well, maybe I'll just show labels here. So um, let me just show um, <coughs> labels with a uh, black filling in the back. Oh, sorry, that's for the blanking. So. Here it is. So as you can see, I have labels here, and those are not uh, entered manually, but uh, they are automatically created. So as you can see, every time I zoom or translate, those are redrawn, but you can um, you can decide not to redraw them automatically by toggling that generate automatic labels um, off. So now you are able to uh, actually place your uh, labels wherever you want. And uh, of course, if you have a label on line equals five, if you move it to 10, it will display a 10. Here it is. Um, so now if I zoom or translate, my labels remain at the same place, and this is it. I'll um, delete the legend here. We are not interested in it. 
and um, I will do another thing which is for the incident. So uh, this time I will just display lines once again in yellow and I put 0 0.2 as well. Here it is. <coughs> so now I just need to choose the right um, contour for it. So we'll define a contour and my third contour level incidence and uh, my levels. So I will just, these are the yellow line here from 5 to 25. So I will just set new levels from sorry, 5 to 25, we'd say delta 5, here it is. So um, now I just need to select my incidents, and here are my uh, incidents, ISO incidents lane. Um, once again, I can show labels, so not regenerating it. In yellow, we'd say black background, a bit bigger, here it is. Um, so we'll just put them at more, well, visible places, let's say. This one I will put here. You can delete labels, like pressing delete and so on. So here is, this is how you would create, for example, a quite advanced uh, plot here. Um, as you can see, it's really easy to redo a plot the exact way you want. And um, yeah, you can really define yourself, your own visualization, mean you can define your own color, your own um, pattern, your own thickness, and so on. So it's a very powerful tool to create from relatively simple um, data sets, some very advanced uh, 2D plots. OK. <coughs> um, this is my last slide. So uh, where can you get support for TechPlot and uh, information? So first of all, if you wish to try it, you can try it for free at techplot.com. Uh, for any question you may have, you can just email us at support at techplot.d. Or if it's urgent or if you want to have a chat, you can just call us um, at the number that is given here. Uh, we also have a new TechPlot certification. So if you are a newcomer, um, this is a one-hour uh, program in which you have a, a PDF reference manual, a video that explains basics of TechPlot. You have data to train yourself, and uh, you get a written certificate at uh, the completion. So you can access it on www.techplot.de slash certification. And uh, I would highly recommend uh, that program for um, an introduction to TechPlot. Uh, thank you very much. Do not hesitate to contact me for any information you may have. Uh, we'll remain online to answer questions as they pop up for a few minutes. And uh, do not hesitate to write me an email for any question you may have. Maybe it will uh, come to you a bit later. So Antoine.Lager at GeniusCoreGraphics.de. Uh, we'll have the recording available on our YouTube channel um, by tomorrow, I guess. Thank you very much.